Personal umbrella policies. Do they really cover your short-term rentals? Hi, I'm Jeff Hampton with STR Law Guys. Today I want to talk about commercial insurance, short-term rental insurance policies. And today I want to speak specifically about umbrella policies. Let's say you go get a personal umbrella policy. Does it actually cover your short-term rentals? Can you count on this insurance? If you wait around to the end of the video, I'll also give you a free ebook, The Ultimate Guide to Your Short-Term Rental Insurance Protection. Okay, so this question comes up all the time. People ask me, Jeff, I'm confused. Uh, I know I need to get insurance, but I have a hard time finding what I feel like is good coverage for my base layer insurance for my short-term rentals. But so what if I get a huge umbrella policy? What if I decide to go out and I find a good deal on an umbrella policy? Isn't that going to cover me? Well, I want to break this down. This is super important to understand. There's two types of umbrella policy. You can have a personal umbrella policy and a commercial umbrella policy. Okay, now commercial umbrella policies are a lot harder to find. So as a result of that, most people just go out and get the first umbrella policy they can and they assume that they're covered. I want to warn you, that is not always the case. In fact, let's talk about what a personal umbrella policy is for. Look, it's a great idea to have a personal umbrella policy for your personal negligence. For instance, let's say you get into a car accident. Let's say that you do something personally negligence. I mean, negligent. Let's say here's a good example of this. Let's say somebody comes over to your house and maybe you've got some kids and you've got some friends of theirs who come over and someone gets hurt in an ATV accident at your house. Well, you may have personal homeowners coverage for your personal individual uh, for your own homestead that maybe has a limit to it. Well, what if there's some serious damages as a result of that ATV accident? Well, your personal umbrella policy would now kick in and cover the difference. You can many times get between a two to $5 million personal umbrella policy. The problem is personal umbrella policies almost never help you with your short-term rentals. The reason why it's very simple. All personal umbrella policies policies have a business activity exclusion section in them. And so what that means is they will not respond to any type of claim involving a business. That's why it's called a personal umbrella policy. So the issue is they carry what, well, here's what happens. Personal umbrella carriers, you got to really look at that specific language of your, of your uh, insurance policy, because it'll have a section in there that talks about that. If you know, regularly business activity, commercial use activity, the problem is your insurance company, just like your base layer insurance, your insurance company is always going to see short-term rental activity as commercial or business activity. So let's break this down. How do you know what you need? You need a personal umbrella policy for your individual efforts of things that you do in your life, whether it's a car accident, whether it's people coming over to your house, maybe it's issues that could come up where you individually get sued. That's important to do that. That's what we, that's what we call a top-down attack. There you want to protect yourself from being sued individually. But if you own short-term rentals, there's a separate issue you have to deal with. What about a bottom-up attack? What if someone's suing you from your short-term rentals and now that you need to make sure and provide you a barrier of coverage of insurance between your personal status and your business activities down here? So I'm going to tell you this. I already did a good video and I encourage you to go back to check, uh, check out the short-term rental insurance video that I did talking a little bit more in depth about uh, insurance and how important it is that you do not get a second home residential policy. But I want to make this crystal clear. When you go get to, when you go to get insurance for your short-term rental, make sure it is a commercial policy. Make sure that you've got premises liability coverage of at least a million dollars. Make sure that you have got um, dwelling coverage or what we kind of call an all risk policy in case your, uh, your guests damage your property. And you need to also make sure that you are well covered for loss of income in the event that you have a serious issue that causes your property to be unrentable on Airbnb and VRBO for an extended period of time. But can I say this? The general rule is this, it's really hard to find a good commercial policy. So that my advice to you is to really ramp up your underlying coverage. Go get a commercial policy. Instead of it being a million dollars on that premises liability, get it up there to two plus. Try to see if you can get it up as high as you can because for every increase in that policy, you're going to see a small increase in your premium. It's not gonna be an exponential increase, but you're gonna get a lot more coverage. So I'm just telling you this, an umbrella cut policy too, here's another thing to be aware of. An umbrella, umbrella policy only kicks in if your underlying policy is fully exhausted. People don't realize this. 
you need to make sure your umbrella policy is only as effective and protective as your underlying policy is. I've seen this happen before where people will go get a residential policy, a second home policy for their short-term rental, and then they'll go get an umbrella policy on top of that. But then if something terrible happens, what they find out is they're not covered on their residential policy because residential policies have commercial exclusions. And if they're not covered on their residential policy down here at the bottom, then their umbrella never kicks in because the umbrella only becomes operational if the underlying policy is fully exhausted. This is a, a big misconception that many people have thinking that an umbrella policy will cover them if they just throw it out up there. So really important to understand that. Beware, never assume a personal umbrella policy will ever cover your short-term rental in terms of an extended loss event, okay? And another thing, people ask me, how do I find commercial umbrella co uh, coverage? Well, look, one of the things that you could do is, and I encourage you here at STR Law Guys, one of the things we do is help people not only put together their asset protection strategy, but also help match them with people that can help find this commercial insurance option for them and to help shop other options for them, including commercial umbrella policies. But it's really important that when you call, here's what'll happen. A lot of times when you call trying to get commercial coverage, you're gonna end up having an agent that is gonna get on the phone with you and they're not gonna push you to that commercial division. They're gonna push you to the personal side because that's where they get, that's where they have a lot of their incentives and that's where they do most of their business. So they're gonna send you over there and you're gonna have some agent talking to you saying, yeah, no, we'll cover you, you're good, don't worry about it. And then what you don't realize is, unless you are in the commercial division getting business commercial insurance here, you're not getting the coverage that you think you are. The worst thing you could possibly do is pay for insurance that's not gonna cover you. After all, insurance companies make their money many times by denying claims. They have no problem for you paying for a premium that you never read the policy for and you didn't realize you weren't gonna get coverage. So it's really important. Now, the last thing I wanna cover is how do I find commercial umbrella coverage? Well, start with your current provider and ask specifically for their commercial division. And then as you speak to them, what you'll find out is many insurance agents will then finally push you over to that commercial side. And then there's all kinds of different options available to you under the commercial division. And that's another reason why having comprehensive asset protection is also extremely important. If you come to that commercial, uh, to the insurance company, showing that you have your properties in an, a layered, L, you know, layered asset protection structure that includes LLCs, limited partnership holding company, a trust, they're going to understand this is a truly business activity and it makes it a lot easier to get some of that commercial coverage um, that you're going to need in the event of a potential lawsuit. Okay. So those are just a few of the things I wanted to cover with you. Listen, I promised you a free ebook if you waited around to the end of this video, your ultimate guide to short-term rental insurance. And if you click through down into the uh, description portion of the video, I'll be happy to send that over to you. We can, if you'll share your email address with us, we'll have it sent over to you. And I wanna invite you, if you have questions, maybe there's an issue that comes up related to your short-term rental asset protection, don't hesitate to go back to our video series, take a look at some of the things that are out there related on how to layer up your protection. Because listen, there are so many short-term rental owners that are out there that are not protecting themselves and they end up being really shocked whenever a liability event comes up. So I wanna welcome you to our channel and I wanna thank you for watching this video. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and we'll see you on our next video series.